Uh, good afternoon. So today I'm going to talk about pathogen reduction in manure by treatment technologies. So I'm going to start with some background, and then I'm going to talk eight of my projects related to this topic. So don't worry, I'll make those all short and uh, informative. And at the end, I'm going to uh, talk about how we can use those information to guide our tech, uh, practice in the future. So manure is obvious one of the major source for pathogen. It's important for us to learn what we can do through the treatment to reduce the pathogen in manure and mitigate our concerns. In pathogen, um, in the pathogen in manure, we calibrate this into three, bacteria, parasites, and the viruses. Through all my research, I focus on bacteria and especially bacteria indicators because myself is not a microbiologist. And most of our, our uh, manure folks, where we don't have the capacity to analyze each individual microorganisms in manure, therefore we use those uh, indicators, bacteria indicators. Um, speak of the bacteria indicators, I use total coliform, fecal coliform, and E. coli. Um, these are study proven to be the good indicators. It means, for example, when we tested the really high concentration of uh, total coliform E. coli, it means in our sample, other pathogens probably very high concentration as well. When we do our treatment, if we can reduce those indicators significantly, it means very likely we can reduce the other pathogens. All right, so for, for now, let's treat the manure and uh, tackle the pathogens. So first, I'm going to talk just the two uh, common practice for solid manure, and later I will talk about the liquid manure. First is uh, composting. It's straightforward. It's one of the most common practice to treat solid manure. In the composting pile or windrow, <clears throat> inside of those, the temperature increase and the bacteria are reduced. Another practice is palletization. When the farm wants to ship their manure into a longer distance, or when they want to put those in the storage for a longer time, or they want to put this in the market for a higher value, sometimes we do palletization. Here is a case study. I did this with my uh, industry partner. We did this palletization analysis on a larger scale. And from the results, you can see the wet pallet has pretty high concentration of those bacteria indicators. It's actually quite close to the raw manure. After our palletization drying procedure, the dry pallet bacteria indicators are below detection limit. So here are two mechanisms. One is drying. Our dry pallet, the moisture content is below 10%. And also is the heat, also similar to the uh, composting, but a lot higher temperature. We use hot air dry. The air inlet was above 100 degrees Celsius and the outlet was around 80 degrees Celsius. So in the future, we try to reduce temperature and hopefully we can achieve the same results. In that case, we can save some energy. And next, we're talking a few more treatment technology in liquid manure. To start with is the digestion, anaerobic digestion. It's similar to composting, but it's for manure slurry and also it's anaerobic condition. Inside, the digester temperature increase and the bacteria are reduced. Here's one of the case study I did a few years ago when I was uh, doing my PhD in Wisconsin. This is a whole year study. We took multiple samples at this large farm. It has multiple treatment process, uh, processes and the digester, uh, anaerobic digester is the most significant treatment to reduce bacteria indicators. From the results, we can see it reduced more than two logs of the bacteria indicators. Another one for nurse slurry treatment is the lagoon system. Lagoon system is commonly for manure liquid uh, treatment and also for storage. In Texas, we have a larger land and quite often on our farms, we have a lagoon or a lagoon system. 
Here's one of my research sites. We do all kinds of work on here. At the top uh, is the primary lagoon, I call it lagoon one. And at the bottom is the secondary lagoon, it's the lagoon two. And we did quite a lot work on those uh, lagoon systems, try to increase uh, the efficiency of the treatment. And from our results, we can see the second lagoon, the lagoon two, further reduce the bacteria from uh, bacteria indicators from the lagoon one. Next one is the cationic polymer. I actually did a quite a lot of work using polymers during my study. Um, on certain large farms, especially when they have a lot of slurry and effluent, sometimes we want to treat the, the effluent further. In manure uh, liquid, we have those like a really small particles. It's harder to separate out. Most of those small particles, they bear a negative charge, including pathogenic bacteria. Uh, bacteria. Therefore, we usually put certain things like uh, coagulant, flocculant, including cationic polymer, try to make those particles into larger flux so they can precipitate out from the system. Here we can see one of my study. Uh, we, in this study, we picked a really high charge polymer. From the left, you see this is a free single E. coli cell, there's nothing. And when we added the polymer solution into the system, here is a, like a form this a thick layer of the polymer, and eventually it will kill the cell. And also, when we have a lot of polymer, uh, we have a lot of bacteria, when we add a polymer, it will form these clusters. It can uh, interrupt the life cycle and also reduce the mobility and form those clusters and precipitate out from the system. Next is the centrifuge. There are some large farms that they use centrifugation to treat the manure slurry. There was one farm invited us to do an evaluation on their treatment efficiency, including solids, nutrients, and we did a bacterial analysis as well. So for the results, we, it showed the high speed of the centrifuge can reduce solids, nutrients, and the bacteria when the speed increase. So here I have to mention, from the polymer or the centrifuge, what we did is we tried to remove the bacteria and the pathogens through, from the liquid system because the liquid system is larger volume and it's harder to increase temperature and do other work on that. So we try to reduce this and we have the solids. We will, do, we will treat the solids uh, a lot easier uh, doing, doing such as drying or composting. Next is one of my current um, research. I did some work before uh, last year and currently we're doing a little bit more. Uh, trying to figure out the mechanism like in detail. So air media has been used for wastewater treatment for recent years. But to my knowledge, we haven't, uh, no one have been using this for manure slurry treatment, especially for the passing reduction. Therefore, we did some work. We used the even better one, we used the active air media, and we treat this in the ideal system. From our results, it showed the bacteria pathogen indicators reduced significantly. Next, I'm going to briefly talk a little bit about antibiotic resistance bacteria in manure. I'm not going to talk too much about this. Our next two presenters, they are really good, so stay tuned, they will talk a lot more about this. So here I'm just talking one of my experiments um, from a, a couple of years ago. So what we did here is we picked four of the common use antibiotics in dairy cow, and we did the treatment, three, three treatment. One is raw manure, and then we treat it by polymer and by centrifuge. So overall, those treatments reduce the solids, the nutrients, um, and reduce the bacteria the overall uh, concentration. But what we look at here is the antibiotic resistant bacteria percentage. What is left over in the, in the remaining phase? So our results showed after treatment, the remaining phase, some of the treatment actually can increase those percentage of antibiotic resistant bacteria. This gives us some ideas and our awareness what we can do in the future, what uh, our future plan will be. For the next few minutes, I'm going to talk three of the uh, new projects I'm working on. We don't have the paper published yet, but we have some really good data. So any of you guys, if you, you are interested in working with me, please feel free to contact me. I have my information, contact information last slide.
So the first one I'm working on this is a solar boat treatment on lagoon. Um, like I mentioned, in Texas, we have a lot of lagoons, and also we have a lot of sunshine. That's why I want to use this uh, solar-powered, uh, self-controlled boat to treat the, uh, the lagoon water. There's no quart, no extra energy. We just put the boat onto the lagoon and use it to, to reduce pathogens and odor. Um, our, our idea is we use this energy. One mechanism is just to inject air, so it makes this lagoon more efficient. Or another one is we use this energy to make uh, electro electricity, and the electrical coagulation can be used to do to treat the water. So here is one of our prototype. It's not in the most fancy boat. I really want to make this like a, a spaceship or something, but uh, in the future. But currently, it worked. Um, this uh, solar energy can support this boat to move and is self-controlled to avoid obstacles and. Um, and also we have enough energy to do a little bit of air injection. And currently in the lab scale, my students, they are working on the, uh, the, the, the electrical chemistry treatment. So in the future, we'll put those two together. Another project we did is we used the specialty mushrooms to grow on manure. Here, uh, the manure you saw is uh, horse manure because it has higher uh, fiber content, a lot of wood shavings. We picked uh, the uh, horse manure and we picked a few different uh, specialty mushrooms. We found out the best growth condition and then they grow really well. So our idea is those specialty mushrooms, they can take uptake the, the, the nutrient and other organics from the manure. So it's kind of compete with other pathogens. They can reduce the pathogen growth. And also a couple of the special, special mushrooms we, we found, they, may, they have those enzymes secreted. Uh, it's possible to hinder the bacteria growth or even kill them. So our next step is going to measure those bacteria indicators. I can share a lot um, more data in the near future. The, the last uh, project I'm going to talk is the uh, disease early detection uh, method to, to the animal. So what we want to do is we use a camera um, to monitor multiple, multiple cows or horses, and we want to see what's, what's there um, I should. I want to see pooping behavior, but uh, I, I should see defecating behaviors. So we want to monitor the discharge time of manure, and we want to monitor the volume, frequency, viscosity, color, and homogeneity. So from those information, what we can get is we want to see if the uh, animal feed is the best or if there's any digestive disorder, or very importantly, related to our topic today, to see if there's any gastrointestinal diseases. Because often I go take samples, one day it's really high of uh, bacteria, or some of our subsample, really high bacteria. We suspect that some of an animal may have some uh, gastrointestinal diseases. In that case, this system will early detect and we can separate the animal out. So we can treat the animal, it will be good for the animal, good for the herd, good for the farm, and good for the environment. So that's the idea. So here is our uh, test run. We have a detecting camera to get all the information, and here is a sensor to, to, to sense the animal uh, uh, defecating behavior. And also here's a detecting center, a computer center, and we have manure on the floor. I have to mention, this is actually not really manure, it's Nutella. We mix it with water and make it a different viscosity. In that case, I want to make sure my computer science students, they are happy to work with us. But I told them, don't lick your fingers. Um, with that, here's my summary. We talked about the uh, manure treatment technologies listed to the left. And here are our main principles, what we did, and uh, what are the reasons to reduce and uh, inactivate the, the, the pathogens. They are heat, dry, nutrient depletion, precipitation, absorption, biocidal, and uh, oxidation reduction, and uh, also important if we can reduce from the source. So with that, um, here's the publication to the first half of my talk. Um, and thank you very much.